Greetings everyone. Welcome to lesson 2. Let's move a step ahead. In this video, we are going to talk about which companies can list on exchange and then we will talk about IPO. Post which we are going to discuss about what drives the stock prices, why do they go up or down. We are also going to touch upon topic like dividend and bonus and finally will get you started on your journey to invest into stock markets. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So if you own a company or wish to raise money by asking public to buy your shares, you need to list your company on the exchange. Well, what are the criteria to list your company? Let's try to discuss that. For a company to be eligible in listing on exchange, it should be profitable for consecutively three years and have a market value of minimum 25 crore rupees. Also, the company should have shareholders and paid up capital that is the capital raised by selling shares should be at least 10 crore which means before listing on exchange you should sell at least shares worth 10 crore to your promoters or stakeholders however for sme that is small and medium enterprises there are special arrangements done by SEBI. Another very important point for a company to get listed is that it should not have any legal cases on it. If any consumer has complained about company and it's running in consumer court or in any other court, the company would not be eligible for raising money. Also, those companies who got closure advice by court aren't eligible either. Not only companies but the board of directors of the company should also be legally clear and they should not have any past criminal records. Apart from company and the board of directors, the promoters and stakeholders should also be legally clear. Once all of these criteria are met, a company is now eligible to raise money by getting listed on the exchange by diluting its shares. How is it done? Let us try to understand that. The process by which company raises its fund for the first time is called as IPO. IPO stands for Initial Public Offering. As the name suggests, initial means first, that means for the first time, company is offering its share to public and wants to raise money. Now how does IPO works? Let us try to understand that. Whenever a company decides to raise money, they approach a merchant banker. Now what is a merchant bank? These are the banks that help large companies or HNIs to raise funds. They also provide loan services and other financial services like underwriting. Some of the merchant bankers in India are JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, Axis Bank, Reliance Securities. Now, why does a company approach a merchant bank? Because merchant banks have a lot of experience in raising funds for IPO. They are also very very good in catching attention of retail investors. The manager of the merchant banker and the core of the company will have a brief meeting wherein the merchant bankers would ask for the auditing reports of the company and they will also internally inspect and the merchant banker would then qualify a startup whether it is worth going for uh, listing on the exchange or not. Once the auditing is clear, once the merchant bankers find this as a good opportunity to raise capital, then they will approve and then the manager of the merchant banker and the core of the company will discuss together and create some paperwork. Also merchant bankers assure the companies that they will sell all the shares to the public. They also take guarantee in the form of underwriting. What is underwriting? That uh, underwriting is an assurity where merchant banker assures that if the shares are not getting completely sold, the merchant banker will buy all the shares, but it will make sure that the company is raising the desired capital. That way, the company is now tension free. But to do all of this, merchant banker charges around 5 to 7 percent commission. But a company that is raising capital will not mind giving such big commission because in return they are getting a guarantee or an assurity that they will raise such, so much of amount. Once the alliance with merchant bankers is done, now the company and the bank together creates a full report of how to utilize the money, the, how to utilize the money that is being raised and mention the entire usage in the registration form. That registration form 
is called as SCC registration. SCC stands for Security and Exchange Commission registration. Now once the SCC registration is done, apart from SCC registration, they create a full draft on how the money will be used, how much capital they wish to raise, how much stake they want to dilute to public and at what valuation. This draft contains other details like last few years traction and the growth and the company, its vision and this prospect or this draft is called as red herring prospectus and this red herring prospectus is then submitted to SEBI for an approval. Once red herring prospectus is submitted to SEBI, SEBI will do its own examination and auditing to validate the data mentioned. If everything is correct, the company undergoes a rigorous paperwork before getting the final approval. Once the company gets approval, they are now eligible to raise the mentioned capital in its IPO. After the green signal, Merchant Banker starts aggressive marketing and promotion to reach a common man and make him or her to invest in the stocks. He will go to all the uh, famous news channels, to all the uh, websites and mention about which IPOs are coming and do its promotion. That way, an uh, investor gets to know which companies are coming up in the market. Merchant banker team and company directors also finalizes the price at which they wish to sell their shares. Yes, the final price of the share depends upon the general discussion between merchant banker and the company's director. No exchange or SEBI is involved in this process. That means a company can decide to list its share on exchange for as low as 10 rupees or as high as 10,000 rupees. It is completely up to the will or the vision of the company and the merchant banker. Suppose company wants to raise 100 crore rupees and if they, uh, they are planning to sell shares at 100 rupees each then they will have to sell 1 crore shares. But if they are planning to uh, keep the share prices 1000 rupees then they will have to sell only 10 lakh shares. So irrespective of the share price that they decide to, uh, uh, they decide to list at the final raising capital will be the same that is 100 crore in our example. Now when the final price is decided the IPOs are opened in two ways. One is fixed, the second is book building. In fixed format, the company decides a fixed price, say 100 rupees per share and lot size is 200. That means a user has to minimum buy 200 shares or multiple of 200 shares and, and bid at 100 rupees. So all the investors will start bidding at 100 rupees, that is a fixed 100 rupees and based upon few criteria, few investors will get the shares allocated for others companies will refund the money back however if the ipo is raised using book building process then the company sets a range say 100 to 120 and ask investors to place orders in that range this is done to find the demand and the true value of the share if the demand is high ipos are sold at premium now instead of 100 rupees in the fixed process here in the book building, we might sell them at 110 if the demand is high. So this is how a company that wishes to raise capital does its IPO. Starting from a merchant banker to SEC registration to RHP to marketing to branding to finally pricing and then eventually listing. Now remember, IPO is done in absence of exchange or SEBI and this market is called as primary market. In primary market, only important event is IPO and it usually lasts for three working days. That is, once a company decides to sell its share to the public and releases the issue dates, investors have generally investors have to generally buy in three days. Once the IPO is done, the stock gets listed onto the exchange. The stock can get listed on its preferred exchange. A stock can get listed on more than one exchange. For example, State Bank of India is both on National Stock Exchange as well as Bombay Stock Exchange. Similarly, once the stock gets listed on the exchange, those who got the shares 
allotted in the IPO will see their shares allotted on their DMAT account. The others will get the refund. Now those who got the shares allotted using IPO in the IPO can sell the shares to different users and this market is called as a secondary market. That is secondary market is governed by exchanges like NSE and BSC where people who got the shares allotted in IPO can sell it to different users or different buyers. Once the stock gets listed onto the secondary market, its prices starts fluctuating. Let's understand how. How does price of anything in the world go up or down? The answer is very simple. It's a demand and supply in the market that drives the prices. Now, if demand is greater than supply, the prices would go up. And if supply is greater than demand, the prices would go down. For example, during coronavirus outbreak, demand for the mask and hand sanitizers went up and the prices of mask boomed from 10 rupees to 50 rupees. If the cure of this virus will be found, the demand would reduce and the prices would again fall down to 10 rupees. Similarly, if the demand for a stock is greater than supply of the stock, the stock prices goes up. If the supply is greater than the demand, the prices drops. Now you can ask what triggers demand and supply. Now there are a lot of factors that demands uh, that triggers demand and supply. Few of them are earning expectations. So if a company is releasing its quarterly result, if the results are expected to be profitable, the demand increases and the prices goes up. If the results are expected to be poor, then the demand decreases or supply increases because of which prices goes down. Apart from earning expectation, there are other factors like growth and economic condition of the nation. And major factor is human emotion. Emotions like panic, greed, fear, excitement. When you hold some shares, when you're getting profits or loss, you tend to behave abnormally and take wrong decisions because of which also demand and supply in the market increases. Apart from that, the company's decision to give bonus, dividend or split also affects the prices. Now what are these we will discuss in detail in the upcoming chapter. However, for now, demand and supply is the major driver of the prices going up and down. So when a company raises money through IPO and uses it to grow its business and make profit, this profit is distributed into two parts. A part of the profit is retained by the company for further growth and is called as retention. And other part is distributed among the shareholder and is called as dividend or bonus. Retention and dividend ratio is decided by the company's management. For example, if a company is making a profit of 100 crore rupees, how much to retain for future growth and how much to distribute among shareholder is completely decided by company's management. A company's management can keep the entire 100 crore rupees as a retention uh, for retention or distribute the entire 100 crore rupees among the stakeholder or maybe it can retain only 20 crore rupees and distribute 80 crore rupees or vice versa. The entire decision is up to the management. We will discuss about this in detail in our next lesson. So this is how a stock gets listed on the exchange via IPO. Now to buy these stocks on exchange in secondary market, you need to open a DMAT account. To start your trading, I would encourage you to go with a discount broker as they charge very less. The brokerage is very less. Now there are two types of brokers in the market. One is conventional broker who will provide you a lot of advisory and other irrelevant services and charge very high. However, there are other platforms like discount brokers where they won't give you many services, but they will give you a trading platform and web based uh, platforms to buy and sell shares and they charge very, very less. To begin your journey, I would always suggest you to go with discount broker. We would also request you to open an account via the link in the description. If you open an account via the link in the description, we would get a small incentive as a referral incentive from the broker and we would earn something. Now in return, we would also help you with live mentorship and live Q&A sessions on weekends. In the next lesson, 
we would be talking about the basic terminologies and the rules of trading and investing into equity markets. We would talk about what is LTP, target, stop loss and other types of terms. We would also talk about what are the types of trading, what do you mean by intraday, positional, swing, long, short, etc. We would also talk about validity of trades. So how long can you hold the share is a very big question that you that comes into your mind. So if you buy some shares, should you sell today, tomorrow or when do you when exactly should you sell the shares? What is the validity that you of the share that you buy? We will discuss that also in details. We'll also talk about terms like margin and settlement. So all of this we are going to talk, uh, talk about in our next lesson. Thank you so much and spread knowledge cause it's free. And if you like our content, do like, subscribe and share among your friends. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next lesson.